kids, welcome back to Roto Talk. Kids, welcome back to a pretty friggin' cold Monday. Tuesday? What day is it? Monday. Yeah. Anyway, it's like 58 degrees out. It's really unseasonably cool for this time of year. So, global warming. Anyhow, so we left off. We glued on the other sponson. It's still clamped up. It's, I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? It's been a while. It's five o'clock. Dang. So, uh, what we're going to do is the cowl. Now, reading the manual a few times. This is pretty clever how this works, but you don't want to screw this up, right? So you have two two nose pieces that are going to get laminated eventually, okay? And you can see they're notched out. Where that notch goes, the reason there's a notch there is this is going to, the stiffener is going to fit in that notch, okay? Mine is already marked. My cowl, I don't know if yours will be. Uh, it's a little bit off, unless my eyes are worse than usual. Um, not off enough to screw anything up. I could do it. Well, no, it's pretty much dead nuts. Could go back a touch. So we're going to go, I mean, just a, just a little, oh, my marker's dying. That's all right. Good enough. It's okay. Um, so you want, if yours is not marked, you want to stick one of these nose dudes in there. Okay. Like meow. And then put a mark there and a mark there on the cowl and then bring in the line down like this is. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to take these stiffeners, okay? The one with the X's, the bit with the X in the back um, is going to be in the back, okay? So that would be wrong. All right, so in this case here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up flush there. I'm gonna put it behind the mark since it's a little heavy. And then you're gonna line that one up flush there. And we're just basically gonna glue this in, okay? Epoxy, or the, the manual says you can CA it. Um, I think I'm going to epoxy it, the reason being, um, you should seal this. And if you just CA it, you're going to get water behind it and it's going to rot. So it would be my advice to go ahead and uh, do it that way. So what we're going to do, it's very simple. I'm going to take some uh, normal 10 minute. I'm going to thin it down a little bit just because it's cold. And it's going to be, I want it to cure up. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to slather this up and I'm just going to clamp all along here, let her cook, flip it over to the other side. Now, before we do that, we're going to take some 220. Uh, where is it? I am out of 220. Wow, I need to order sandpaper. I got 240 though. And we're going to sand the inside up about three inches, okay? Uh, which seems a bit excessive, but that's okay. Um, and then we're going to clean it, wipe it off with alcohol, and then I'm going to epoxy it. If you want to CA glue it, that's fine. And that's what we're going to do. So let me go ahead and uh, get this clamped up and ready to rock and roll. And then what we're going to do, once these are clamped up, so here's the theory, do not put any glue back here on this piece. Shadwell, what manner of ship is this? Okay. So if you want, you could tape it so you know where to stop. Um, but this is the small bit is the front. The big bit that you break off is going to be in the back. Okay. Um, this is just a spacer, basically. So try not to get any glue on there. So a little trick, uh, what you can do is you can stick some tape on here. That way you don't forget. Yeah, close enough. Okay. Easy peasy. You can do it that way if you want to. All right. Or you can just write a line down it, which is probably what I'm just going to do. So I'll just scribe it. It's 
not the space shuttle. That would be perfect. Okay. But that line will tell me I need to stop <clears throat> at that point. So you can see your laser etches. Right? From that corner edge all the way to there. And plus that'll help you break it off after she's glued in. So we're gonna thin some epoxy. You don't have to thin it, but I'm gonna thin it. I'm gonna smear it. I'm gonna get a bunch of clamps. I'm gonna clamp it. Uh, wait 10 minutes or so. Pop him over. Pop him over. All right, be right back. Hey, hey kids, we are back. So it is actually the next day. I had a little bit of a gap in here even with the clamps i must not have sanded the, there was a bump here so what i did was i took some wood uh filler wood flour with some epoxy that's why it looks kind of crummy there but it's okay we'll never see it uh so to cut this now you can see these tabs okay you can pop these off if you did everything right just like that hang on All right, and then how I cut this stuff usually is I'll take a Dremel with an easy cut wheel. These are easy lock. These are, I believe, in my uh, Amazon list in the description. So you just pull down on this release. And these are way better than the ones that are held in with the tiny little screw. Those tend to break if your angle changes. These do not. They have a little bit of flex to them. Really good. So how I do this, I'm not going to do it on video just because it's too involved. But you won't be able to see as much. I'll cut into this part first. Almost all the way up. And then I'll actually start like right here. Follow this around. And then meet it up there. And try not to cut that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this guy out. Be right back decided I am going to do a little bit of this on video. So one of the things I do is I don't cut all the way through and keep going. I do a quick scribes, okay, and I go in the direction the wheel is rotating. So in this case, it's going clockwise. So I start at the left, go to the right. That way that you're not fighting the wheel. The wheel's pulling you, okay? Hopefully you can see this. Hopefully. Let's see what happens here. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is block sand this guy. Okay. So I'm going to take some uh, 80 grit on a on a what call it? I need to see that right there. That popped out. I have a booger in there. I need to get out with the Dremel and get that a little tighter, or else we're gonna have a big old bubble ugly thing there. Uh, but other than that, it's perfect. So I'll take a, a block and we'll sand it with 80 grit, smooth out some of the cut edges, and then uh, we're gonna really, really hope this thing fits. Okay, so uh, I'll be right back. All right, kids, we're back. It's been a few hours I actually, had to do some work stuff, but um, we're done with that trimming got a little bit we got to sand that down a little bit you can see i got a little off the nail there uh to bring this down but all in all man that is beautiful and that's not that's not even that's just rough sanded now one of the things i like to do on my channel is show you my screw ups i try to show them in real time one thing i forgot to do before i put these on i should have sanded these down See that right there? I screwed up and I forgot to sand. And it's much easier to sand this down when the uh, sponsons are off. So now I had to use a Dremel tool with a sanding drum and be really careful and say, pain in the butt. So don't, I'm going to start putting a disclaimer in my build videos like, watch the whole series before you start. <laughs> okay. So the next thing we're supposed to do, so we broke off the tabs. The next thing we're supposed to do is drill holes through these, uh, you know, through the fiberglass. God, sorry, hang on. 
So if you've got one of these little dudes, I got mine from Zip Kits. You can, uh, it's much easier to do. You can, you can see this. You can drill right through the top, uh, but it's a little bit easier to use this as a guide. Okay, so no big thing there. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll just drill those four holes out. Then I believe we put her on the boat and we uh, drill through the boat. We got to put on the mounts on the sides and uh, we'll drill through those. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and drill these through. And then we're going to, I'm going to finish sanding the nose so the damn thing fits. And I'll, I'm going to tw tweak this. You can see, you can literally see where it's dark right there. That's where I need to, to uh, sand it down more so it sits flush. That was what was holding up the side. Okay. So I'm going to drill through these, do my sanding. We'll come back. We'll put the mounts in. Be right back. We're back. So I drilled my holes and then it says to place the uh, cowl on the boat and then mark, take a pen, take a drill bit, whatever you want to do, mark those holes on the body of the boat, the fuselage of the boat. And all I did, you can use a Sharpie marker, you can use whatever you want. I literally drilled a little dimple in each spot. Then what we're gonna do, uh, you remember in the beginning, let's see where I can find them. All right, all right, as I was saying, remember in the beginning when we laminated these round dudes? What we're going to do, at the rear of the boat, we're going to drill through those dimples I made. Then you're going to put this right over the center of that hole. You go right about there, ish. And we're going to epoxy those suckers in. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix up enough epoxy to glue it in and then also seal it, since I already sealed this inside, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to drill out the front tab dimples that we put in and we're going to literally tap them with a tap. What was it? Quarter by 20, I think. Or, hang on, let's see. It says in the manual, yep, quarter by 20. So, and we're going to attach the cowl to the boat with uh, the bolts. We're going to flip it upside down. We're going to glue in these, okay? Um, I think... We might go ahead and laminate those as well. Yep, yep, yep. Those need laminated as well. So these two pieces can get put together. You can use wood glue at this point because it's not sealed, um, or you can use epoxy. Now remember, if you epoxy or seal something first, you can't use wood glue on it anymore. It has to be raw wood. So I will probably just raw wood, you know, wood glue these together. Uh, these I'm going to epoxy, and then. Uh, we'll pick it up from a right there. And then we're gonna form the nose, glue it to the cowl, finish this thing up. Um, we also need to seal our radio box, but we also need to put in our beams. Now, <clears throat> I'm doing mine different than the manual after that point, okay? I'm not using the suggested servo, I'm using a different method. Um, I'm not using two servos, and I'm not using the one that they, the big servo in the book, I'm using a different large servo. Who's that quarrelsome fella? Um, and I need, I'm going to make a 3D printed frame that fits in here. So what you would do is in the kit, you get these two little half by halves. Then you're going to epoxy these in for your, for your rail tops. Okay, then you have your servo mounts, however you want to do it. Okay, there's my throw. And I probably, I might even modify these. Eh. I'm going to make my own 3D print that has the throttle servo and the steering. My steering is going to come out over outside the box. So it's, it's going to be kind of different. So I don't want to, uh, I'll probably do that off camera, but then walk you through it after I'm done. But you're going to want to glue these rails in. I'm not going to use these, but either way. Uh, one thing before we even get into this part that I do want to do with you, is we need to put the, what do they call those things? Anti-slip or skip or whatever the hell they're called on the bottom, okay? Trip, skip, dip, I don't know, something like that. We got these, that's for steering, okay, yeah. I'm remembering, slow but sure. So. These right here, 
And this is out of order of the manual. You can put these in at the very last. You can put it in them. As long as the sponsons are on, you can put them in at any time. All right, that's pretty firm. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a block. All right, use my trusty metal block. And like a doctor here. All right, we're going to put these in like this. Because remember, when we built this thing, you put tape and all that good schmutz over everything so you don't have any nasties in the in the slots. And then you're going to put this in, and it's going to bend around. Now, if you're careful, give it a little bit of flex before you do it to help you. And I will clamp it. This part you won't have to clamp too much. Uh, but what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to CA glue it first get the whole thing in then I'm going to epoxy we're gonna epoxy the underside make sure it's sealed really well and we're gonna to have to seal this really well too now when I seal this boat I'm not too worried actually I can probably just seal this when I seal the boat I'm not even gonna worry about that because this is big enough that I can get my one inch brush under there and seal it real well after it's already in so I won't make a hellacious mess the little one the little 30 you know, the 31 inch jobby over there, the electric tunnel, that one was a lot narrower and it was hard. It was easier to seal it before you put it on, but this one I'm not going to worry about. So all we're going to do is we're going to take a, take a square. Okay. And we're going to glue this thing in. Now I suggest that you see a glue it just a little bit on the outsides here. Make sure it's nice and straight up. Make sure there's no bumps on there. Okay. Then I'm going to run a bead of epoxy here and then we're going to put this in ca this down when the other thing that you want to do with this where's my sanding block son of a gun Ugh. all right sanding block you want to put a beveled edge very easy i mean obviously i'll spend more time on it than that because you want this to have very very little if any uh, you want this you don't want to step here you want a nice blend okay less resistance taking off all right so we're gonna do this part first all right so we're gonna take some CA glue and activate to make sure you're at a 90 make your life easy Now, I'm CA gluing it on the outside because I can sand it because I want to get a nice bead of epoxy on the inside. Does that make sense? And I glued my damn piece to it again. All right. So, easy enough. This thin epoxy, I should or CA, I should have used the... Uh, now I got to do it over. Damn. That's crazy. Might edit this part out. There we go. But I just screwed it all up. So, let's do that again. <laughs> Gotta have fun, guys. Gotta have fun. If you ain't having fun and laughing at yourself, you're doing it wrong. I don't care how many boats you build, you will still screw up. And I always try to show my screw ups so you don't do the same. Nobody, only two people in the world that don't screw up. People that don't do anything and people that lie about it. I've wondered sometimes if ever I'd meet a more unscrupulous blackguard than myself. And I have. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this down and sand this down even... You want almost a... You want a point on this. A chamfered point. Okay. And then I'm going to... Now, what you could do is you could soak this and pre-bend it. I don't think that's going to be necessary for this. Um, but when I epoxy this, I'm going to epoxy here first on the bottom, just so I can get a nice line here. Then I'll put it in, I'll CA glue it a little bit, and then I'm going to take my brush on the inside and really hit it well, the nose and all that stuff. You want these sealed up. Don't want any water getting in there. Okay? Be right back. So it's been like five days. This has been a very long week.
my kids had their dance recital I had a ton of work projects to do just have not had time to do much so uh, kind of moved along a little bit and I finished it up so it's actually ready for paint <laughs> but uh, I think where we left off I don't even remember where we left off, but anyway, I went ahead and I sanded these rails nice and smooth. I need to do a little bit more today before I prime it. Okay, I did seal these as well, and I also filled in the holes I drilled in the back. Let me help you out on a little thing and don't screw up what I did. I dr I did the fronts, I did the backs. The reason I filled them in is the screws, the nylon screws, are going in kind of at an angle. Here's a tip. Screw in either the front or the back first, you know, dr drill with the drill like we did. And then literally screw it on with those two that you just did so it doesn't move at all. And it's really where it needs to be. And make sure the sanding is all done before you do it. Because if you sand it, it's going to change the dimension. It didn't change mine by much. A couple mil, but it was enough to screw it up and kind of kick the screws. I didn't like the way they were going in. So I'm going to redrill those later. Then we do this. Put the canopy on the boat. Screw it in. Okay, pretend mine's screwed in. And we're going to flip it over. We're going to laminate these two pieces of wood for the nose, sand it so it fits real nice. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of an edge, a bevel on this so it meets the floor. And then I held the nose to it real tight with CA glue and just put some beads of CA on there, sprayed it so it was nice and solid. Then I sanded it down, okay, and added even a little bit more of a bevel, okay. Then you are pretty much done. Now, the thing to make sure of, that's a final coat that I used to sand. That's why it looks so dark. Um, <clears throat> and I did seal the whole boat, too. So, and then what you want to do is you want to take epoxy, mix it with some thickener, and then, because all we did was CA glue this in, from the outside. Then we're going to take some CA glue, or I'm sorry, epoxy with thickener, go along the inside and really get it like toothpaste. Just really slather it up and glue that sucker in. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to seal that nose on the inside. Now, I think, eh, it's not hard to do. This is pretty much watertight, so I'm just going to take a little bit of my sealer, pour it in there, and like stick my hand back there and mix it around. A little bit of a pain to reach but not too bad so that is basically it for that cowl and it's really really nice it fits really well uh, once I redrill the back holes like I said it fit but it did shift on me just a touch that was my fault because I should have screwed this in before I screwed these in in the back so easy peasy not a big deal um, and then we're gonna paint it went out and bought my paint today all I can do is see this boat in white I don't know why I thought red or bright yellow would be cool. It's like, yeah, that would be cool, but white would just be like white with black letters and just really make it look huge, right? So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to paint it white. Um, so I'm going to try to get it primed and sanded today, shot tomorrow. That's the goal because our lower unit, our lawless outboard unit, is going to be here on Tuesday, supposedly. And I personally cannot wait. I'm going to do the unboxing online on the tube here. Uh, just because I've never even seen one in real life. Literally. Never seen a, a gas outboard in real life. I've only seen them on YouTube channels and, and websites and things like that. <clears throat> so we're going to do a few videos. And I'm going to talk with Fred from Lawless. Uh, he and I have become a little bit of friends. We've been chatting back and forth on email. And I'll also talk to Joe uh, and get some tips and tricks and whatever uh, ideas. And I'm going to do just outboard engine videos that's going to go along with this build but they're going to be exclusively hey this is this this is this and because there's very little information out there on these things and since i am a complete novice to it i've run many many nitro outboards but this is a completely different devil so uh with fred's help and joe's help uh hopefully we can get you some good information for these things so uh, sorry for the delay i know it wasn't like a a super detailed uh, on how to do the cowl, but it's really pretty easy. Just read the manual. Don't even listen to me. Just read the manual. Do it. It's a no-brainer. Um, and aside from that, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me, whatever. I'm not quite sure how I'm doing the windshield <laughs> because there's no
no indent, and it's just kind of very flat here. Now, one of the other things before you paint this guy, um, take, uh, how did I do this? Take some, uh, you can see it's all foggy, and that's because I sanded the whole thing down with 320 or whatever it was. And then uh, after I did that, I sprayed it down with alcohol, and what you'll see is tiny little air holes. They're not holes all the way through, but just in the forming process, there might have been air in the mold, and it just kind of made a little divot. That's where all this body filler, just covering tiny little holes, and I feathered it out like that, okay? Um, because when you paint it, especially a darker color, it'll they'll pop out like zits. It'll, it'll look really, really ugly. Um, but that's really about it. So next time you see this, which will probably be Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe, uh, depending on what we do with the engine. Um, and we still have a long way to go. The build is done for the most part. Everything's done on it just about. I did put in the rails of the radio box, but my radio box is going to be completely custom. I have not put on the top yet uh, just because I'm still, I need to engineer how I'm going to do that. Um, clean all this crap out. Obviously, I got final coat on there, uh, dry coat. But um, <clears throat> other than that, the construction is pretty well set. And we're going to start doing the guts and the steering and the throttle. Um, yeah. So I need to get throttle cable. It's going to be that long. And I think, I think, Fred, I ordered the uh, steering cables or steering rods with the engine. I'm pretty sure I did. I hope I did. Uh, but I do need to do something with a throttle cable. And since the nearest hobby store is an hour away, um, I'm probably going to order it off Joe. Or if I can just find it on Amazon and get it next day, that would be nice because I just didn't even think about it. I'm so programmed to use my direct cables with, I didn't even think about ordering that stuff. So there's a long way to go on this setup and this build. But uh, the build itself very very simple almost identical to this little guy which we are getting our new motor our faster motor today for this um almost identical however and it's very simple i do recommend this uh it's an expensive investment but if you're willing to part with the money and have a really good boat that's really really cool i don't recommend it for the first boat because it's an outboard and it's really touchy um and I'll probably screw it up too, so, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but as far as a build goes, yes, completely entry level. I mean, it's not, not hard at all. But I will say it is a lot of work. And it's a lot of work because it's so damn big. And the sanding and, and, and all that jazz. So, And I still need to do a better job on some of this stuff. But, um, but yeah, she's just about ready to go. So until the next time, kids, keep dry side up. Bye.